This video is sponsored by Raycon. Their Bluetooth wireless everyday earbuds will give you awesome audio quality wherever you happen to go and whatever you happen to use them for. Don't judge me. They're super convenient, fit comfortably and discreetly, and they've made even the most mundane of tasks spine-chillingly- <laughs> And it's almost time for that thing you may possibly have heard of. That, that is really distracting. <laughs> so why bother with all this nonsense when you can just order a pair of these for that friend of yours that won't stop talking your ear off about spooky podcasts? For that matter, they'll be useful for anyone on your nice list. They all have ears, right? Well, hopefully anyway. With five stylish colours to choose from, you can find the right one for any of them. Since they start at half the price of other premium audio brands, you'll have more money for mince pies and booze. And with free shipping and returns, giving the gift of sound has never been easier. You can even get 15% off across the entire site by clicking the link in the description or going to buyraycon.com slash cynicalreviews and using the code HOLIDAY. And by doing so, you'll be helping to support the channel. So DO IT! Or I'll slide down your chimney and leave something messy in your stocking. Make of that what you will. NO GOD! NO GOD PLEASE NO! 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 Hmm. Well, you certainly did an attempt. Hello, guys. It's time to talk about YouTube again. My favourite topic. Here's a challenge, YouTube. Could you possibly go several minutes without being yourself? Would that really be so hard? Because you did the thing. The thing that we said was bad and that you shouldn't do because it's bad. And you did it anyway because that's who you are. Once again, the YouTube powers that be have descended from atop their ivory tower. This time, it's to bless us with their biggest big brain move since YouTube heroes. And we thought those were the dark times. How little we knew. In their infinite and incomprehensible wisdom, they've decided to start hiding the dislikes on videos. So, the update from YouTube is that the dislike button is staying, but the dislike counts will now be private. You can still dislike videos and that action will be used to tune your own recommendations, but you won't be able to see the dislike count. Only the creator can find it on the back end if they want. The immediate and inevitable reaction to which was, of course, everyone disliked that. We're all gonna sigh together, all right? Three, two, one. This decision is so baffling in terms of how bad it is, and yet so unsurprising considering who it's coming from, that I couldn't not talk about it and moan about it. Mostly moan about it. It's good. It's good for the system. Because all jokes aside, this really is a terrible change, and I want to talk about why. Dislikes have always been an important and essential feature on this platform. Although less effective than when you'd rate a video out of 5 stars, like in the ye olden days, the ratio of likes to dislikes gives a viewer a quick impression of how well received a video is, which in most cases will roughly correspond to the video's quality. If a video has around 1-5% to dislikes, that generally indicates that it's a good video. If the dislikes are up to about 10%, then that might indicate that the video has some issues, or maybe something that was said in the video struck a nerve with a certain group of people. Roughly 30-40% to 40 dislikes indicates that the video is a subpar or controversial one from a creator who usually makes good content. And if the dislike bar looks like a lightsaber, you know that video is utter trash that probably shouldn't have been uploaded in the first place. This is obviously a very rough metric and it isn't always true, but it gives you a general idea. There is so much garbage being uploaded to this website every second and viewers only have so much time to waste. So the like-dislike bar is an immediate and effective way to warn a viewer about bad content. And for a site like YouTube where all the content is user-generated and moderation is extremely difficult, it's one of the best systems we have for putting down the bad content and allowing the good content to rise to the top. Especially since the number of dislikes will affect whether or not a video is recommended in the algorithm. Just imagine if review sites could only show positive ratings. You'd essentially be tricked into giving bad media more of your time and attention than it deserves. And that is exactly what's going to happen now on YouTube. Hiding the amount of dislikes is going to encourage trash, clickbait, and videos with reprehensible content. 
thereby making this platform a worse place. Now, this again is about protecting all creators and making sure they have a chance to succeed and feel safe in doing so. Is this some kind of sick joke? Like, regardless of what YouTube says, there is no way that this is going to encourage good content. Like, there's no way. Dislikes also empower us as viewers by allowing us to give our feedback in a democratic way, in what is essentially the wisdom of crowds. It's a simple way for us to express our distaste or objection to the content or the creator's intentions. Remember when the Fine Brothers tried to trademark reaction content on YouTube? Boom, get disliked. A trailer for an incredibly unfunny and inflammatory movie or show? Boom, get disliked. Greedy corporations trying to be down with the kids or make an incredibly out of touch political statement? Boom, get disliked. It's the easiest and clearest way for us as an online community to say, no, we don't want this. Get fucked. Oh, there's no justice like angry mob justice. Dislikes can also make for a fun social experiment, such as Neutral Response or PewDiePie's Can This Video Get The Same Likes and Dislikes, where random, unconnected people on the internet would work together to keep things perfectly balanced as all things should be. Well, can't do that anymore. Thanks, YouTube. Dislikes have even served an important role in online meme culture. If it hadn't been possible to dislike Rebecca Black's Friday, then it wouldn't have become one of the most disliked videos in history and thus attained its legendary meme status. All that context has been lost now because we can't see the dislikes. Awesome. Arguably the most important reason why dislikes are so essential is because they help protect the viewer from harmful content and scams. Remember when The Verge uploaded a PC build guide that was not only incorrect but also dangerous? Like, it was so bad that if you followed their advice, you could damage your PC or even hurt yourself? The massive amount of dislikes that video received would serve to tell a viewer who was looking for a PC build guide, hmm, maybe this one isn't exactly Kino. This is Editing CJ, who just realised this might not actually be a very good example because The Verge actually disabled likes and comments on this video before they took it down, so... Yeah, well, my point still stands. There are also plenty of helpful guides and tutorials that'll trick you into deleting some essential system or downloading some malware that'll then fuck up your PC. Again, a large amount of dislikes can immediately tell a viewer to get the fuck out of Dodge. And that's not even mentioning the tutorials that are just useless and waste your time. And so by hiding the amount of dislikes, YouTube has put its user base at greater risk of real-world harm. Good job, guys. You, you supposed tech experts. Well done. So we've lost an important metric for judging the quality of content. We've lost a democratic way to raise objections to bad practices. We've lost an easy way to warn others about scams and harmful content. And we've even lost a fun little tool for online shenanigans. But why? Why have they done this? Whence to the reason? Well, via their blog, Team YouTube's Twitter account, and a video they released explaining the situation, They've said that it was to disincentivize trolling and harassment through dislike bombing. Apparently, groups of viewers are targeting a video's dislike button to drive up the count, turning it into something like a, a, a game with a visible scoreboard. And it's usually just because they don't like the creator or what they stand for. That's a big problem when half of YouTube's mission is to give everyone a voice but their explanations make no sense, are incredibly dismissive and condescending, and are just bullshit, really. I mean, just look at this guy's expression. That is the face of a man who knows he's been thrown to the wolves. So, earlier in 2021, YouTube experimented with making the public dislike count private to see if it would help reduce these coordinated dislike attacks across the platform. And after analysis, they did see a reduction. No shit. Now, harassment campaigns are a real thing, and they really suck to be on the end of, especially for small creators. And yes, if you remove the public dislike count, there will be fewer dislike bombings. It's just like when they abbreviated the public subscriber count so you can't get those unsubscribing live streams that were a thing back in 2019. But this approach is like cutting out the tongues of everyone in school so they can't bully the fat kid. Right, I keep accidentally hitting my keyboard and the image behind me keeps changing. That's really fucking annoying. Now it's in its own folder, so it can stay the fuck on the screen. Now don't fucking move. And it's usually just because they don't like the creator or what they stand for. The majority of the time a video gets dislike bombed, it's because it warranted it. And we shouldn't lose the ability to do that just because some people abuse it. This is so characteristic of YouTube. 
a certain feature gets abused, they can't figure out a way to fix that, and so they nuke the feature completely. I say we take off and nuke the entire site for Morbid. It's the only way to be sure. They got rid of the reply videos function because it got abused by the reply girls who would spam their obnoxious clickbait videos all across the website. There's a YouTube history lesson for you. They got rid of community captions, which allowed viewers to upload subtitles in their own language and thus broadened the video's reach, because some troglodytes were misusing them to advertise their own shitty channels. They also got rid of annotations, which were really useful and could be used to make Choose Your Own Adventure series. But they had to go too, because some people were taking the piss with them. And those are just three examples of how YouTube tried to fix a problem, but just ended up making the website worse. It's definitely a running theme. Basically... There was an attempt. In this case, they're claiming that it's to protect creators' mental health, which makes no sense because we can still see the dislikes on our end in YouTube Studio, so we still know if a video is being mass disliked. Next common question. If creators can still see the dislike count on the back end, how's that any different? They can see it if they look for it inside Studio Analytics under the Engagement tab, but overall, it's much less likely to cause stress and embarrassment if the count isn't visible to the public. According to who? Who did you ask? Because it certainly wasn't us, the people that make the content that brings people to your platform in the first place. If they really cared about our mental health, they wouldn't have this video performance chart staring us straight in the face when we open YouTube Studio. There's no way to hide this, by the way, and if a video is performing in 10th place out of 10, that stings more than any amount of dislikes, let me tell you. But if they really, really cared, they'd fix their platform so it doesn't give us so much grief. And they'd help us deal with ridiculous copyright claims. And not remove our best performing video from search results for no reason and then fob us off with a bullshit excuse. That one still stings. They're also trying to claim that this was the result of creator feedback, which is also nonsense. Because again, when they announced this, the feedback from creators was overwhelmingly negative. A response that they knew was coming. And they knew that this was coming because they tried this back in March. And the response back then was also overwhelming dislike. We told them that this is a terrible idea and we don't want it and that they shouldn't do it. And then they went ahead and did it anyway. Classic YouTube. Am I so out of touch? No, it's the children who are wrong. And even when they were first talking about removing dislikes after YouTube Rewind 2018 became the most disliked video on the platform, they knew that dislikes were important and that hiding them would be problematic. Another option is just to remove dislikes entirely from YouTube. That's a very extreme option. That one seems like kind of not super democratic in my opinion, because not all dislikes are dislike mobs. They're just, you know, people expressing their their opinion about a video maybe a more subtle one is removing the dislike count i don't know if you just suppress the dislike count but you show the like count that one seems i mean i work on the org that you know advocates for creators but that one seems uh kind of like tilting the scales a little bit and according to Linus of Linus Tech Tips, he was present at meetings with YouTube about this issue and the community's concerns were completely ignored so don't give me this horse shit about creator feedback, okay? Oh, but we got so much feedback about this from our creators and we need to respect their wishes because we're trying to make things a better place for them. Fuck off. They also tried to excuse it by saying that the option that creators already have, which is to remove likes and dislikes entirely, results in the bullying and harassment of those that do so. Which, I'm sorry, but just like disabling comments, hiding the amount of likes and dislikes just makes it look like you're trying to deny criticism or cover up the fact that your video is bad. And it should make anyone immediately suspicious. And I'm sorry, but the feelings of that small number of creators that do have to disable the like and dislike bar because they are getting harassed do not outweigh all the concerns that we've already talked about. Look, I get it. It sucks. But there are much bigger issues at stake here. Unfortunately, YouTube disagrees. They even admit that dislikes serve an important function for their users, but then just say that, on balance, they don't care? I've always thought seeing the number of dislikes on a video helps us know as viewers if it's a good video or not, if it's a helpful tutorial or not, or if what a creator is, is saying in their video is generally agreed with or not. But overall, it's much less likely to cause stress and embarrassment if the count isn't visible to the public. 
So you've made your platform worse and more dangerous for its users just to protect some people's feelings. I'm sorry, but that's fucking stupid. I... <laughs> No, you know what? That can't be true. That explanation cannot be true. Because even YouTube cannot be that stupid. Mwah, but you can still report the video. Yeah, because we all know how reliable YouTube's reporting system is. Ah, oh, but the light counter will still be visible to give you a feel for the video. Yeah, but the people who are most likely to fall for scams aren't usually the most discerning. So they won't know what a good view to like ratio looks like. And with no other context, they might think, Wow, three million people liked this video! It must be good! First, without a public dislike count, how can viewers tell if a video is worth watching? Again, I kind of have this question too, but it turns out that while viewers might use the dislike count to give them a sense of a video's worth, when the teams looked at the data across millions of viewers and videos in the experiment, they didn't see a noticeable difference in viewership, regardless of whether they could see the dislike count or not. In other words, it didn't really matter if a video had a lot of dislikes or not, they still watched. Right, first of all, source? Where's the source? Because they're trying to discredit the importance of dislikes in order to justify hiding them, and I'm calling bullshit on that. Second, if a video's dislikes are hidden, that might make some viewers curious as to exactly why they're hidden, and that might account for some of those views. So, that's the update. I hope it doesn't cause too much frustration. Honestly, I think you're going to get used to it pretty quickly, and keep in mind, other platforms don't even have a dislike button. So, consider that. Thank you, and I hope you're well. Notice how condescending that was? Can you see why we're annoyed? We have gone well beyond the animated avatar crossing his arms at this point. We have gone right to the source. Even Pornhub is still showing their dislike count. Pornhub is now more user-friendly than YouTube. Just, just let that sink in. And everything they've said about dislikes can also be applied to comments. Are they going to remove those as well because some commenters are toxic? Can you imagine not even being able to leave a comment on a dangerous or misleading video? Just imagine how fucking dreadful this platform will become if they follow this logic. Just, just stew my head in. Just stew my head in. This is all assuming that we can take their statements about their motivations at face value. Thing is though, I don't believe for a moment that this has anything to do with helping small creators. Because not only does it make no sense for them to prioritise the well-being of small creators over all other concerns, but they also have a bit of a history of just straight up lying to us. Back in 2016, there was a huge issue with viewers being automatically unsubscribed from their favourite channels without their knowledge, which caused some big names across the platform to bring attention to it. This has just seemed to be that YouTube flipped the switch and then all of a sudden, people were just getting unsubscribed from channels. But when I got this message from PewDiePie just a couple of days ago, he said, YouTube's unsub me from your channel. I just realised I haven't seen your videos in a while. This is so fucked. I mean, that's encouraging. YouTube's response was to flat out deny that there was a problem at all, essentially calling us all liars while at the same time lying themselves. We've been hearing reports from viewers that they've been unsubscribed from channels that they've been previously subscribed to. What's up with that? We've heard these reports and we take those feedback so seriously. YouTube doesn't unsubscribe people from channels. We never unsubscribe them from your channel. We've actually looked at over a hundred individual cases, and so far, we haven't been able to find any underlying glitch. YouTube doesn't unsubscribe people from channels. You really think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? A response that was so fucking terrible that they deleted the video. And then especially when you ask YouTube what's up and they tell you, Oh, there's nothing wrong. That feels good, too. That unsubscribing glitch is still a thing. Five years later, I still get comments and messages about it. This is what I mean when I say fix your platform. But yeah, you'll have to excuse me if I'm a bit... Well, cynical. And one more common question. Is this because YouTube Rewind got lots of dislikes? No. Although there are some teams internally who have learned the hard way what it feels like to get lots of dislikes. This is their only claim that I actually believe. Well, sort of. Having your most important showcase of the year become the most disliked video on your platform is pretty embarrassing, let's be honest. 
And while they did start talking about removing dislikes after this happened, I think that the real motivation for this change is monetary. We've known for a very long time that YouTube prioritises its money makers, whether that be the largest and most profitable creators or the corporations that pay for ads. Ad revenue is what keeps YouTube going, as obnoxious as they can be with it sometimes. Hell, they'll punish us for showing a bit of ankle in a video, but they'll run ads that are just straight up pornographic? Because money. And it's embarrassing for a corporation to pay a shitload of money to run an ad campaign on YouTube, only to then receive a huge amount of negative feedback from the community. That kind of immediate and vocal backlash on that scale is simply something that doesn't happen to ads that run on traditional media. And just bear in mind that YouTube is directly competing with traditional media for ad space. YouTube will put up with as many dislikes as we can throw at them, as long as they're making money. But if corporations threaten to pull their money unless YouTube does something to protect them from embarrassment, then you better believe they'll get off their asses and do something. Just like when they brought in the demonetization system when corporations boycotted the platform during the adpocalypse. Call me a tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist if you want, but I think that that's what happened behind closed doors. I just realised that when they're at that angle, you can't fucking see my eyes. If this really was about protecting creators, then they've gone about it in an incredibly incompetent and ham-fisted way that does nothing but make the platform worse for all but a few. But having seen YouTube's priorities in the past, I fully believe that dislikes have been hidden in order to protect the feelings and image of paying corporations thus protecting YouTube's bottom line, but at immense cost to the user experience. The people that will benefit by far the most from this change are big corporations, people that make shitty content, and scam artists. And if they're the ones who benefit the most, then it probably isn't a good idea. Is it YouTube? I honestly think that this is one of the worst changes YouTube has ever implemented. It's so bad that one of the original founders of YouTube directly responded to it in the description of the first ever video uploaded on the platform. Something he'd only done once before when they tried to force Google Plus on all of us. And here he is basically saying, Look how they massacred my boy. It's really quite frustrating as both a viewer and creator of content on this website, because I genuinely want this platform to be good for all of us but they keep making changes that nobody wants, completely ignoring our advice, and making the platform worse. It's just... It's just frustrating, you know? Because at the end of the day, what can we do about it? They're not going to change their mind now, and they've got no credible competition. We'll just have to get used to using comments as a new dislike bar, I guess. Dislikes are still an important form of feedback for us as creators. So feel free to give this video a dislike if you want. I can take it and let me know what you think about all this nonsense down in the comments. God damn it, YouTube. Can you just... Can you just not do this shit, please? Please? Well, at least it can't get any worse, I suppose. No, I really shouldn't have said that. Other platforms don't even have a dislike button. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Quick announcement, I now have new merch. The mic was covering it for like all of the video because this is how I had to do my setup, but yes, here it is, new merch. I've just launched a brand new merch store on Spreadshop with five new designs. In addition to the crapper board, I've got one that's inspired by retro cartoons, this cheeky Dungeons and Dragons inspired design, the so bad it's good caption, and nipple buttons, because I made a joke a while back about putting that on a t-shirt and thought, fuck it, banter. There are dozens of products to choose from for each design, and if you order within the next few days, you can get 15% off. Links in the description. If you want to support the channel, also consider checking out the sponsor, Raycon. Also, link in the description. You can also support me on Patreon, or become a YouTube channel member. For as little as $1 a month, you can get early access to uncensored versions of videos without ads or sponsorships, as well as a mention here in the credits. Follow me on my social media and join my public Discord server, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and by the way, in case you were wondering, yes, this is an Imperial Knight. Knight Castellan, actually. Uh, and I will paint it at some point. I will. At some point. At some point. You really think someone would do that?